in hand spinning, nothing's ever going to be 100% exactly um, even and consistent. And you can just get that out of your mind as the goal of hand spinning. If you want even and consistent, buy a mill spun yarn. If you want to make some yarn that you will love in a project and you are ready to embrace the intricacies and uniqueness that is present in hand dyed yarn, then you're ready to spin. Hey y'all, I'm Darcy of DarcyDesert.com. I'm a knitter, knitwear designer, a just enjoyer of fibery things. And I put a question box in my stories on Instagram and someone asked about my spinning. So I said that I was gonna do a YouTube video on their question. And I got another question about what kinds of fibers I prefer, but I'm gonna go back to the very beginning of my spinning because for a long time, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand. I just got my notes here. I didn't understand why people even liked spinning, like why knitters got into spinning. So I was a very reluctant spinner and I'm gonna just tell you a little more about my journey and where's my coffee? Literally was right outside the door, but I got my water too, so that's good. All right, so how I got into spinning. Let me start with how I got into knitting. When I was in high school, I was going through one of the art closets and there was this huge uh, bag full of yarn and knitting needles and I didn't know how to knit, so I had asked my art teacher if I could have them and then I took it home and my mother showed me how to knit. Now she's a very, has very basic knitting skills. So just like there's a cast on with like a figure eight cast on and a way to knit. I don't think she really even taught me how to purl, but she got me started. Thanks mama. And after that, when I went to college, I took some classes at the craft center at my college, Canyon College, what's up? Go lords and ladies. Um, we, the class of people who were learning in the beyond the basics class went to uh, my knitting mentor's house, which was like right on campus. And she would like serve us tea. She's a very sweet British lady. I don't want to say her name because I don't know if she's like out here on the internet like that, but she was very good to me. She is still good to me. Hey, what's up? If you're seeing this, you know who you are. Um, but she really got me started in knitting and ever since that I've just loved knitting. So I knit for about 12 years, maybe 13 years before I even had any interest in spinning. And when I would go to fiber festivals, I would see people like spinning and I would just be like, like, why do you want to make knitting any harder by like forcing yourself to have to make the yarn when you could just buy beautiful yarns. But I really hadn't had anyone ever take the time to show me the kinds of beautiful yarns that you can only get with hand spinning. So once I really realized the beauty of hand spun yarns, which is, it's just not something that can ever be replicated by a machine. It has to be done by hand. I just dove in and for for that part of my life, that actually happened during the pandemic. So in March 2020, I was still living in New York. I was in grad school at the time to be a speech therapist. And uh, when the pandemic was declared, we had to stay home and it was really bad in New York at first. And it hadn't kind of like spread out to the rest of the United States yet. So we decided we were going to move to St. Louis because we could afford to live in a bigger place in St. Louis. And that's where I'm from. That's where we live now. So we decided to move to St. Louis. And sometime after the move in May, after I graduated, was when I decided to start spinning. Maybe a little bit before I graduated. It kind of runs together. You know how the pandemic time works. So I bought some fiber and I bought a drop spindle. And that was really how I got started. So if you want to get started on spinning, really the only things you need is a drop spindle and some fiber. And you can get going for like under $50. And I wouldn't recommend getting started with a wheel unless you just got money to burn 
or if you just know that you're gonna love it then you can start with the wheel i think you should get your feet wet first with a drop spindle so i actually have my drop spindle here and this is what a drop spindle looks like now i'm mostly self-taught or i had found a bunch of youtube videos to kind of guide me along the way i watch a lot of jillian e videos because her hand spinning videos are very good i'm gonna link a few in the description so that um you can watch them if you're interested in getting into hand spinning um let me just jot that down so i don't forget when i edit so i bought this drop spindle from actually melanated boho bay and i follow her on instagram and that was how i got this drop spindle now this is a pretty primitive tool for hand spinning you don't need a lot of skill but it does take a lot of skill to get your spinning to be consistent and to get a balanced yarn so this is how i got started and i didn't get it <laughs> at first like why why anyone would ever put themselves through this spinning and but i didn't give up on it and i had already bought i think like three or four um i guess braids of roving so i was like i'm at least gonna get through this amount of roving before i decide that it's not for me or before i decide that i love it and i need to keep going so i got my drop spindle and this is the first yarn that i ever spun if you follow me on instagram you would have seen this yarn um, because it was my first yarn ever and it's pretty chunky pretty thick and thin it's a two ply and it's got a leaf in it um this is some yarn that i probably won't ever use just because i know or maybe i will use it in something special like a weaving i think i want to get into weaving maybe in my retirement um because i just have enough crafts like I, I i just can't take on something else and i don't have enough space for a loom so i definitely can't get into that right now but i think this yarn may be something i use for that so this was my first spin i'm gonna show you some subsequent spins since then and then i'm going to talk to you about when i decide to spin something new what i look for in a fiber so this is my first yarn and i forget where i bought this from this was like a clearance roving from a online yarn shop i don't remember what the name of it is but i'll look through my email and try to find it this is definitely like a non-super wash it's not super soft um it's maybe 23 microns or so it has more toothy feel to it, which is good for spinning. Now, this is a, this was my second spin. A little, a little more even, not even, just a larger like ply, I'll say. This is a BFL silk and it was hard to spin the silk because it's kind of slippery, especially with a drop spindle. I would not recommend a BFL silk this is a mother of pearl uh, roving braid that I bought. And I really liked how this looked in the back. It looked like Cotton Candy Dreams or something like that to me. And I don't remember the name, but I'll list it. I loved how this looked in the back. And I knew that if I wanted to keep the momentum of my spinning going, I had to choose a roving that I really liked a lot. So that was kind of the second thing that helped me to hold on a little longer even when I felt like this kind of sucks like I don't know I don't know if I want to keep doing this so that was my second spin and my spins after that have gotten better but those were the last two that I spun on my drop spindle be or I guess first two um that I spun only on my drop spindle because I got a wheel after that and I knew when I get the spinning wheel, it will be a lot easier to ply yarns and I just wouldn't be as miserable. Not that I was miserable, but 
it wouldn't be so time consuming to make something that's already time consuming. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about my spinning wheel. So when I decided to get a spinning wheel and I'm going to put in some pictures, um, when I decided to get one, I knew that I wanted to have one that was um, not electric because I like the feel of being able to control my treadling. And I knew that I wanted something that didn't take up a lot of space because I don't have like a ton of space. I needed to be able to like kind of fold it up or put it to the corner and it not be like a big monstrosity. So I decided to get the Kiwi 3 Ashford spinning wheel and I bought that from Wild Hand and I'll link that. This spinning wheel comes um, either unfinished or finished. I got mine unfinished and it's still unfinished. And I don't think you're supposed to do that. But I do have a plan to, I was gonna say to disassemble it. I have a plan for Artie to disassemble it. And I saw a product on Instagram that was actually marketed to me, thanks Instagram, uh, called Rubio Mono Coat. And I actually opened up a chat with them to ask what kind of product they would recommend for a spinning wheel and they said the oil plus 2c would be the right product for a birch spinning wheel and that's the one that i have in ashford it's uh new zealand birch tree wood so mine is still unfinished but i can tell and i can see sometimes when i use an oil on it that that oil will like almost leave like a residue on it and I just know that it would be better for the life of the spinning wheel if I finish it so that's something I'm planning to do like right before a long vacation so that I can make sure I'm letting everything dry and I won't be like anxious to use it or put it back together right away and they have a ton of colors to choose from in the Rubio mono coat um the spinning wheel that I have is light in color so I was thinking of maybe doing like one of the more out there colors not just like brown and they have like some reds and blues greens that will like almost tint the wood uh but it doesn't transfer it's like good for the planet I think as good as something like that could be it's not supposed to have a strong smell which is very important to me because I don't like smells like chemical smells um, I really don't like air fresheners even really. Um, so I don't want to be using something that I'm sitting in front of and it's like fumes coming off of it. So I'll make another video about that if you guys want to know more about that process and I can record it and share it with you because there's not a lot of content actually on YouTube about finishing a spinning wheel or about what products are good for finishing a spinning wheel. But the price for the unfinished spinning wheel, I think is like $100 less. So I think my spinning wheel was about $600 after shipping and all that. And I actually bought with it a braid of roving from Wild Hand that arrived first. And when I did that, I spun, I actually have a third one of these that I don't know where it is. Um, but this was a beautiful, and I have a little tie on it to keep it together. These were some beautiful, roving um it was one braid of roving that i bought from wild hand and this is from a black owned um yarn company called onyx dye works i think onyx fibers maybe definitely onyx though and i just loved how this color looked it was very like springy to me and this was around the springtime i think so this was my first spin on that and i really spun it very thin but like almost too thin in places like there it's kind of messy there but i'm planning to hopefully use this held double with maybe a surrey or a mohair just to kind of give the yarn a little bit more integrity because some of it is spun really very thin um but you know even the yarns that are not perfect i feel like there's still a project for them it doesn't have to be, nothing's trash, you know, nothing's um, worthless. Even if it's just a lesson and you decide you don't want to keep it, you could always gift someone some hand spun yarn. And even if it's not perfect, if they're worthy of your gift, they will be grateful for it because you made it. So 
yeah, I still, I look at this now and I'm like, wow, I've really come a long way since I spun this, but it's still beautiful to me. And I will never forget this was the first yarn that I spun on my spinning wheel. So in between buying the drop spindle and the Ashford spinning wheel, I bought an electric eel wheel, like the $99 wheel. And I don't want to badmouth anyone's small business, but I just did not have a good experience with it. And it seemed like it did not have enough uptake for me. And I don't know if I was just using it wrong. I feel like I probably was just using it wrong because I didn't have a lot of experience with wheels in general at that time and I just couldn't get it to work for me so I gave it to someone who would use it by the time I was ready to spend $99 I was really ready to spend 600 on a wheel that would last me the rest of my life and beyond um, so there are other brands of electric spinning wheels and um, Felicia from Sweet Georgia, I believe her name is Felicia, she does all kinds of videos. Now, this woman's got so many videos about spinning, about just all kinds of handicrafts. So if you want to know more about spinning wheels, I also watched a lot of her videos when I was just getting started. I still watch her videos. Um, she shows a lot of different variations on uh, spinning wheels and I think she has a whole collection. Now that's something I haven't gotten into and I noticed that some spinners have a tendency to keep buying wheels and I don't really need another spinning wheel. Some people like to collect them. I understand that or like their antiques or that kind of thing. Mine is is for, for working. It's to make yarn it needs to serve its function and if it stops serving its function it's gonna get fixed or replaced so i don't have multiple spinning wheels i know some people are into that people are also like that with drop spindles they'll have a whole bunch of drop spindles like it'll be an art collection and people do very advanced things with drop spindles as far as you know carvings and different types of wood and there's all kinds of different design elements like this guy could be here at the bottom so i think this is a some kind of i know this is called the whirl and whether it's at the top or the bottom i don't i'm really a beginner at spinning so i don't know all the terminology but i'm gonna just tell you this one definitely worked for me and i think it's easy as a beginner to get the hang of it with a spinning wheel like this so i just need the one but I know sometimes people will have, you know, several spinning wheels that they, or not wheels, but, you know, drop spindles. And then there's other types of spindles, like supported spindles. And then there's like other, it, it just, you can go on to infinity. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can go on to infinity with the variations on spinning wheels and drop spindles. But this is my collection is all I got. If there's another tool other than a drop spindle that you would acquire, the tool that I would recommend is the Nitty Knotty. Now, this guy, this is also an Ashford um, Nitty Knotty. And I also want to finish this um, with my Rubio Mono Coat. And I'll have it probably the same color, maybe a different color as my um, spinning wheel but I'm gonna try it out on my Nitty Knotty first because this is like a lower risk you know investment now the Nitty Knotty I want to say this was maybe like $30 or so it came disassembled and then these two ends I've since glued mine together you want to basically glue them at a 90 degree angle from each other that you want them to be perpendicular to each other so that you can wrap your yarn off of your drop spindle or off of your spinning wheel onto your nitty knotty to make it into a skein and then so you can wash it and washing your yarn that you spun is kind of like blocking your finished knit garments like it's not finished until it's washed so 
let me look at my notes and see all the other things. Oh, I wanna talk about different types of fiber that you can spin. So there's pretty much roving is one. There's pencil roving, which is another type of roving. Then there's bats and then there's Rolox. So I have examples of those and I'm gonna show you what each one is. So an example of a, these are called braids of roving. This is roving. Roving is basically like just a thick chain of wool that's been combed all in the same direction and it's been dyed in this form as a preparation for you to spin it. And this is some Lola Bean Yarn Co. Targi wool and the name is A City So Nice, they named it twice. And I actually have a spun up version of this also to show. Not pretty. Um, if you all want Adela to dye some more fiber, then comment on this video and I'll send her your regards on the fiber. But it's a beautiful blushy pink with a lot of different tones in it. And this is not how I thought it would spin up. I thought it would be much darker. Um, but it's beautiful. I have every intention to spin this other one also. I'm going to spin this in a different weight and I'll use them for different projects probably. But this is how a roving um, bat will come. Sometimes, you know, different people have different ways of kind of chaining it and braiding it to make it into something that they can ship. But this is more or less will be the same thing. Uh, it, it will all be on that chain. So, and it'll be thick. It needs to be drafted before you can spin it. So that's regular roving, I'll say. And then there's something called pencil roving. And this is called a rainbow roll. And this is a Noro product. And you can see this is still a kind of loose yarn but it's super thin and this is already drafted so you could spin it right off of this it doesn't need to be prepared really right now it's become trendy for people to just knit with this um in what they call a plate so this is because it's kind of flat like a plate i'm not gonna knit with this i'll probably spin this but i just haven't had a chance to spin it yet i bought this on a trip to Colorado. I forget the name of the yarn store, but it was a product I hadn't seen in a yarn store before. And I'm always looking for new things, things I haven't seen before. And this is a Japanese company. It's 100% wool and it's pretty fluffy. It will probably make a really lofty yarn. So this is pencil roving. Then there's bats and excuse my crinkle. A bat has been put on a what's called a drum carter. It's like a big circular hairbrush. You know those brushes that are like a roller and you use those to blow dry your hair? This is like that, but it's a big one that the wool gets spun around on. And then afterwards, they use this pick to pull it off and it comes off in like a sheep, like off of a sheep when they shear the sheep except this would be dyed ahead of time and then it would be carded so that the different colors would be more like painted so this is a bat from passion knits yarn and this is shetland and alpaca mix so this is also a non-super wash with fibers i learned that if it's does not explicitly say superwash, it's non-superwash. You should assume it's non-superwash. With a lot of commercial yarns, I would say my assumption would be that it is superwash. So that's something you wanna distinguish between spun yarn and fiber. So with this, you would typically pull off like a section and then you would spin it off of the bat like this. I do have a yarn here that was spun from a bat to show. It's not the same one as that one, but this is a yarn that was spun from a bat and it has all different colors spun into it. And you can see all of the different types of fibers that are in here, all the different colors. And this was from a advent, a fiber advent that was offered from 
uh, Kiki at Black Smoke Fibers, and she does incredible fiber dyeing. Fibers, bats, she's got all kinds of fiber things. So if you're a spinner and you're into that, you should check out Black Smoke, bleh, Black Smoke Fibers. Say that 10 times fast. Um, so this was spun from a bat. With a bat, you're more likely to get a lot of different variations on color. You could still have that with a roving, but with a bat, a lot of times you'll have more textures in there. And people do all kinds of art yarns. I'm not so much into art yarns. I want yarns that I can knit with or use for a contrast in a project. I'm not necessarily using yarns for weavings. Maybe one day I will, but I like to spin a more fine yarn for hand knitting. So in the, I don't know if you can see the like sparkle qualities on this. Can you see them? They're kind of like metallic. That's something that you wouldn't necessarily see in a roving, but would be more common in a bat style fiber the last type of fiber that is usually prepared um, that you might see in a store is these little they're like little snakes and these are called rollogs so these are made on what's called a blending board. So imagine like a big square or um, rectangular hairbrush and you have a, an additional smaller hairbrush that you comb all of those fibers onto and then you can almost paint with them. And then you take two sticks, almost like two chopsticks and you trap the ones at the bottom. Then you pull it out and you roll it as you roll up and you pull the fiber off and that's what spins all the fibers around in a like circular direction. So when you spin off of this on the end, you can see the fibers are coming off almost like a, in a spiral around each other. So this just produces a different yarn. This is actually the yarn that I had on here. And I took this with me on a trip because I knew I wasn't bringing my spinning wheel, but I still want to get my chances myself a chance to spin if I wanted. So this was my first and only time ever buying Rologs, but they were nice to spin from because they're already combed. It's a easier experience, I think, because the drafting is easier. So for a beginner, I would actually suggest trying some Rologs out or trying a bat. And I say that because sometimes fibers that are in a braid of roving can be not matted uh, but the fibers have been more compressed when it was dyed and in a bat or a rollock the fibers have been brushed open more so it's not as hard on your hands to draft that fiber out and to keep it even because it's already been somewhat prepared for you so that would be my suggestion if you're looking for a place to start get yourself a drop spindle and some roll logs or a bat um a lot of yarn stores do have a small fiber section so it might not be like what's most prominent but most places do offer at least some fiber if you're looking for people who are selling spinning fiber i mean Google is your friend. You can find people. I've also mentioned a whole bunch on this podcast. And you can also get um, fibers that are from more commercial yarn companies like Malabrigo. I really love Malabrigo Comb Top. Now that is a beautiful yarn to spin with. And that transitions me to my next topic, the construction of the fibers, like what kind of sheep I prefer to spin. So I have spun... Merino, Targi, BFL, Falkland, Polwarth, and Lincoln, Silk. I mean, bats have all kinds of stuff mixed up in them. And I also did the advent from Black Smoke Fibers that had maybe like 15 or 20 different fiber types spread throughout the month. 
and that's what this one is from and i really enjoy spinning falkland the most out of all of those fibers and i have an example of some falkland wool i'll show you so this is a falkland wool this was a braid from passionate yarn and you can see how even and lovely why is there a leaf on it? this room used to be my garden prep center and i still got a few you know stragglers on here this is a beautiful roving that is falkland and i just did such a wonderful <laughs> wonderful job on this i'm i'm really impressed with myself when i spun this and I spun this on my spinning wheel. It's incredibly even. My tension is really nice. It is a balanced yarn. So if your yarn isn't balanced, when you open it up off of the knitty knotty, it'll spin. Like, it'll be spun like that. So I know it's not good to have, um, you know, your yarn's not balanced because that's what I learned from the School of Sweet Georgia and from uh, Jillian. But I haven't ever, I've, I've heard that having a unbalanced yarn can lead to when you use it in your project, it may be um, kind of puckery or it may, um, it maybe just won't like lay flat nicely. So I don't have the experience. If you, if that has happened to you, please comment and let me know because I don't know. And Fortunately, my yarns have turned out okay. I haven't really overspun a lot of them. People also say that you can re-spin them to undo some of the twist in them if they have too much twist. I haven't ever done that. I've just been satisfied with what I got and I'm not rocking the boat. So this is Falkland. I believe that these sheep have merino ancestry so it is quite soft it's not uh like a super fine micron maybe this is like 20 microns 21 microns but it's really um the fibers seem to be long and sorry can you hear that wind that's the wind we're on a tornado watch right now and i hope that's not distracting but all right seem to calm down the fibers in this seem to be longer, so they just spin easier. They seem to be a little more toothier. Now that's something that people describe in spinning that I never hear people saying to describe yarn elsewhere. People will say it's a toothy yarn and that means that the fibers almost want to cling to each other more and that makes them lay down easier and spin easier in your spinning project. So when you uh, make a wool superwash, you lose that quality of that toothiness and those, I guess, fibers tend to lay down more and they don't catch on to each other. So it makes it more difficult to spin a superwash yarn. So. I do prefer non-superwash Falkland. I haven't ever spun a superwash Falkland, but this other project is a super a non-superwash Falkland also. And this was a bunch of they were almost like nibs or nips. I don't know what you call them. They were like little bundles of fiber and I'll link the I and I'll put the name of the person that my husband bought this for bought this for me from because he bought this as a gift to me and I don't have any of the details because I was not um involved in the purchasing but he bought a purple braid and then he bought a bunch of these little nib nips like little tiny yarns I'm gonna get them hold on this is it so these are like little roving nips almost. Like, you know how when you have like a bottle of like liquor, the small bottle is called a nip. Well, this is like a nip, roving nip. 
but there were so many of these that I just picked out a few of them. This is the purple color that I had the full braid of. And I just put them all together and just spun them in no particular order. And I ended up with two braids like this. So it's this purple and then it's a two ply with all the other colors. And I ended up with two skeins of it. And it's not the most even spin I have ever had, but it's gorgeous. And I definitely have enough to use in a project that has a lot of contrast. So I don't have a project for it just yet, but, and I still have a bunch of these nips left over. So I'll probably use those for something different, but these two will definitely go together. So I just like Falkland for whatever reason. It's a nice yarn to spin. It seems to take color beautifully. Um, that's just my preference. I, I also did enjoy spinning BFL. I don't think I have, this is the only example of spinning BFL that I had, but this is with silk. And I would say it kind of sounds like the silk would make it more smoother, like easier, but it, that's not the case. It makes it more, almost like unpredictable when you're trying to draft it. So I would wait a little bit on the roving with the silk if I was a beginner. I also had this other problem and you may have this problem when you are just starting spinning or maybe if you already been spinning, you have this problem. I think of the roving as like, oh, it's so beautiful, like I don't wanna mess it up. But I had to get past that because as I said, like, you know, you learn something new with every spin that you do and you improve your, you know, mastery of spinning. But I just felt like, oh, this is so pretty. Like if I mess this up by spinning it ugly, then I have wasted the roving. And that's not the attitude you wanna take. You wanna put that out of your mind. And that was something I overcame to feel like nothing was being wasted. It was an experience that I still enjoyed, even if I made something that was less than perfect. And it's always going to be less than perfect because in hand spinning, nothing's ever going to be 100% exactly um, even and consistent. And you can just get that out of your mind as the goal of hand spinning. If you want even and consistent, buy a mill spun yarn. If you want to make some yarn that you will love in a project and you are ready to embrace the intricacies and uniqueness that is present in hand dyed yarn, then you're ready to spin. If you have some more questions for me about hand spinning, please leave me a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Instagram at Darcy Does It. You can buy my knitting pattern for the Cuddle Puddle Wrap at DarcyDoesIt.com. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!